Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my top 10 perfumes for life 2021 edition and I took it a step further. I challenged myself to not include any of the fragrances that I talked about last year on my 2020 list, which was a lot of sentimental, very nostalgic fragrances. So these are all different. I did not take cost into consideration, so it's a very expensive list. I certainly wouldn't recommend going out and buying all 10 of these fragrances, but it is the gift giving season, so people are looking for something really special either as a gift or maybe for their own wish list. If you're looking for something that will really elevate your fragrance collection, I don't think you can go wrong with any of these fragrances. Make sure you watch until the end of today's video. I'm attempting a low-key kind of sneaky vlogmas where I upload every day this month. Anytime I've attempted this in the past, I fall short, but something I'm definitely doing is I'm bringing back 12 days of giveaways again this year, and today is day one. So watch Watch until the very end for all of the information on today's giveaway. It will also be listed down below in the description box. Narrowing down my list was difficult enough. I threw in three additional fragrances, so this is a list of 13. I know the original prompt says 10, but you'll just have to throw me in YouTube jail because I couldn't do it. And I'm presenting these in seasonal order. I think they're all signature scent worthy. You could wear these fragrances year round, but I'm going to begin with the lighter, fresher fragrances that would be perfect spring, summer, and then slowly but surely they'll get a little bit deeper, moodier, warmer, more suitable for the fall winter months. So I'm going to begin with Zerjoff Dema Bianca. I discovered this fragrance earlier this year. It was Love at First Sniff, and I remember reading the name over and over again. This was constantly recommended to me before I tried it, and I completely understand why. It is so unique. One of the most interesting fragrances in my collection. It's described as a floral woody musk fragrance. It has keynotes of kumquat, lime, iris, violet, Egyptian jasmine, lilac, lily of the valley. Base notes are vanilla, malt, Ambret, white musk, sandalwood, and cedar. It comes in this beautiful, very ornate bottle. All of the Zerjoff fragrances look stunning. Very regal design, but the scent is incredible. Mm, it has this little zip. I think it's the lime, the kumquat. It's a citrusy, fruity burst right away, but so unexpected. It kind of awakens the senses like ooh kind of bubbly like a champagne pop but then it's instantly very creamy and smooth and that's what's left in the dry down so it's very elegant but it's so playful and flirty it has maybe a hint of jo malone lime basil it leans more warm weather appropriate think tropical, beachy. It's not something that I've been grabbing a lot lately and I probably won't again until closer to Valentine's Day. Another springtime favorite is Elixir from Roja Parfums. This is one of the most beautiful, feminine, slightly sweet, fruity floral fragrances I have ever smelled. This would make a true 10 perfumes for life list if I had to just keep whacking away and narrow down this list to maybe even a top five. And it really speaks to me personally. I just find it to be my style. I think if I were to create a fragrance, it would probably smell something like this. It has keynotes of Bergamot, Lily of the Valley, Ylang Ylang Heliotrope, Violet, Raspberry, and Peach. Base notes include Violet Leaves, Cinnamon, Cedarwood, Sandalwood, Vanilla, Ambret, and Musk. I always say this is a princess perfume because it's so dainty and delicate and sweet but it smells very elevated, like something you would wear for a special occasion. Now, of course, all of these fragrances could be everyday, and I think Elixir in particular would make an incredible signature scent. It's delicious. I get a lot of the raspberry peach, so it's very fruity and floral, but still very soft, feminine. It doesn't have the same citrusy pop that bite Dama Bianca has. It's still fruity, but it's more of a, a soft, sweet berry fruit, not citrusy. 
I think Elixir is a little bit more trendy. It's a little bit more upscale. Next is Cassiopeia from Tiziana Terenzi. Another new discovery for me that is not a new perfume. And I think that's a theme here. I discovered so many incredible fragrances, many of them thanks to your great recommendations this year. So I feel like not only did I expand my perfume collection, but it is so much better than it was before. Cassiopeia was an instant favorite, and there are so many perfumes at the Tiziana Terenzi counter. Difficult to make a decision, that's for sure, but this was the one that I kept going back to, kept going back to, and it became my first fragrance from the brand. I'm so happy I did pick this up because even though it is pricey, for a while this was my go-to. It's so easy to grab, especially during spring, summer, because it's a little bit fruity, kind of tropical. It's very Miami. Keynotes include passion fruit, cassis, lemon, and fern, tea rose, carnation, lily of the valley. Base notes include tonka bean, musk, and sandalwood. Anytime there's tonka bean or sandalwood in a fragrance, ugh, just gets me every time. The tonka bean will literally make your mouth water. Unlike Dama Bianca, which also has a bit of a tropical vibe, Cassiopeia doesn't have that same unique factor. It's not like, oh, wow, this is so different but it's kind of undeniably great. Just beautiful. It's a little bit sweet, kind of smells fruity, a little bit of like a creamy, almost coconut. I remember when I was reading reviews, a couple people said it smells like a really good shampoo. It took me a while to shake that review because I thought, ugh, I don't want to smell like fancy shampoo, but it doesn't. It is so much better than that. Somebody else compared her, actually a lot of people were comparing this with one of the Britney Spears fragrances, I think Fantasy. I've never smelled it. I think it is still available. I might need to purchase it just so I can test them out side by side. So if you like Britney Spears Fantasy, I think that's what it's called, this would maybe be the elevated version. I love it. It was love at first sniff. I think this is a people pleaser. It would be a very easy blind buy. If you like fruity florals and you like anything with a smooth vanilla trail, this is for you. One of the most elegant and timeless perfumes in my collection is Sublime Fini from the House of Creed. It's just a beautiful vanilla forward fragrance and it's not a warm, sensual vanilla. It's more of a light and airy, kind of fluffy, whipped macaroon scent from heaven type of vanilla fragrance. Keynotes include vanilla, tonka bean, white bergamot, lemon, and tonkin musk in the base. All of the House of Creed bottles are beautiful, but this line in particular, this elevated line, is absolutely stunning. It looks royal. It feels really nice in the hand as well. I feel like I can absolutely smell the lemon and the bergamot in this perfume. It's almost like a meringue. It smells like dessert. Mm. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit powdery, but it's so soft and feminine. Just a beautiful vanilla. Unexpected even. Another favorite from Creed is Love in White for Summer. I think on my list last year, I talked about Aventus for Her another incredible fragrance, could have easily made this list, but Love in White for Summer is one of those perfumes that I would miss. I would miss it terribly if I didn't have it in my collection, so I feel like it has to be here. I have to talk about it, but if I were really splitting hairs and narrowing down to just 10, I would probably have to choose between Love in White for Summer and Cassiopeia, maybe put Dama Bianca in the list. I feel like these fragrances, they're so different, but they work for the same occasion. It's so hard to narrow them down, I figured I'd just include them all. It's fresh, floral, keynotes include Bulgarian Rose, Bergamot, Sweet Magnolia, Florentine Iris, Rice, Virginian Cedarwood, Ambergris, Sandalwood, Apple, and Jasmine. This is not a new discovery. This is a fragrance that I have loved for a really long time. It's just so clean amazing. It's so simple and yet so classy. Instantly transports you to 
vacation. An island, private island, has just the right balance of fruitiness. I definitely pick up on the apple. Gives it a nice fresh bite. Just a beautiful perfume, daytime appropriate, could be worn every single day, would make a beautiful signature scent. And it's a little bit aquatic as well, just makes me feel very calm and relaxed. Now we're really getting into the summer perfume. Summer is my favorite season, probably because my birthday is in July and so I'm just used to being happy and festive over the summer. And of course, living in Florida doesn't help. Summer vacations, you get to do fun stuff. But this has got to be my favorite new discovery of the year, but I would say the best new launch of 2021. It's 51 Essence from Roja. I love this fragrance so much. It was instant connection for me just like most of the fragrances on this list actually but 51 speaks to me in a way that is nearly impossible to describe it just makes me melt i feel like i am melting whenever i smell this perfume i remember first reading the notes and feeling almost a disconnect because when i smelled 51 for the first time i smelled a sunset to me, this smells like summer evening, a very sensual summer perfume, like a summer date night wearing a sexy dress, going out to dinner and just watching the sun go down. But the notes are really warm and cozy and they lead you to think it would be the perfect fall winter fragrance. Key notes include lemon, bergamot, mandarin, orange blossom, rose de may, jasmine, tuberose, raspberry, cinnamon, clove, patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, and orris. It almost smells edible, it's so delicious. A very fancy, luxurious pina colada. A little bit tropical, but so elegant and so feminine and just one of the most beautiful fragrances I've ever smelled. I wish they had a body wash, a dry shampoo, a body lotion. I just want to bathe in this fragrance. Something happened to me recently. Haven't discussed it on camera. Haven't even wanted to say the words out loud. But I'm finding more and more that when I smell sandalwood and fragrance, which has always been one of my favorite notes, it can kind of turn me off or give me a headache. There's just something that I'm not loving at the moment. Even in some of my favorite fragrances, I smell them now and I don't know if my nose is just a little bit sensitive to it for whatever reason, but I smell this and that doesn't happen at all. And I definitely pick up on the sandalwood, but there it's just so balanced. There's so many other things going on. You can kind of pick out individual notes if you try, but there's so much going on in the fragrance. It's so complex and beautiful. It's just the perfect harmony. Next up, we have Greenwich Village from Bond Number no. 9, New York. For the longest time, I declared this as my signature scent, even though, of course, it takes time to invest in a signature scent before it truly becomes your signature. I think between 51 and Greenwich Village, I have no idea. It's a real toss-up. I have no idea which would be my number one favorite. And Greenwich Village is kind of difficult to describe this is an anytime, any place, just ferocious fragrance. This screams loudly. 51 is a bit softer. When it dries down on the skin, it's going to sit a little bit closer, but Greenwich Village has some extreme projection. Key notes include cassis, lychee, mandarin, peony, water lily, jasmine petals, ambrox, peach, musk, vanilla, oak moss, and praline. I know some people say praline. I used to say praline growing up, but I lived in New Orleans for a couple years and everybody says praline, like the praline candies. So now I always have to say praline. I think it's tomato, tomato, they're both correct. This is a fragrance that is really unique that captures that wow factor. Wow, almost smells edible. I think it's the oak moss that gives it that wait a minute <laughs> because a lot of the other notes are found in these other fragrances but it's the oak moss that gives it sort of this sultry earthiness that's very unexpected it's a little bit sweet a little bit fruity a little bit exotic but just yummy 
Another showstopper with that wow factor and also a crowd pleaser would be Haley from Tiziana Terenzi. One of the most captivating fragrances. It just smells so bold and beautiful. When I smell this fragrance, I just think, wow, I have to be dressed up. This is not an everyday fragrance. Of course, you can wear your perfumes whenever you want to wear them, but it just smells like a very sophisticated special occasion. I feel like I have to be not only dressed up, this isn't just any old date night. It has to be a special occasion, like a holiday party or some sort of gala, dance, festive occasion. It's just the type of mood that it creates. And I think that's one of the special things about fragrances is that it really is kind of an invisible accessory. This fragrance will dress up an outfit and it is so decadent. I think this might be the big sister of Elixir. They have similar notes. I remember when I was reading the notes of this for the first time, I thought this sounds similar and they do smell kind of similar, but they're different. I would say Elixir is much more light, feminine, very pretty, daytime appropriate, but Haley is kind of the evening moody, really powerful, bold, a little bit spicier version of Elixir. If you like one, you'll probably like the other. Keynotes include passion fruit, cassis, rose, lemon, peach, raspberry, cinnamon, musk, vanilla, and amber. Night and day difference between this and Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is fruity, floral, I think daytime, summery. Haley is much more dramatic. This is the drama queen, but I do think you can wear it anytime year round. I think that it, because it's so bold, it just leans towards fall, winter, evening occasions. We're just past the halfway point, so these are going to be our fall winter fragrances. They're a bit warmer, a bit cozy, but I think this is a really nice transition. Fragrance de Bois Santal Complet. This would be great in the summertime, but also would transition really nicely to fall, and I think this is appropriate in the winter as well. It is so smooth, creamy, dreamy, and very addictive. Whenever I spray this on my skin, it lingers for such a long time and it's very powerful, kind of overpowers anything else, any other smell in the room. And I find myself just smelling my arm, smelling my arm, can't just keep smelling myself. I can't stop because it smells so good. It's an amber vanilla with keynotes of coconut, lemon, violet, black pepper. Base notes are sandalwood, vanilla, musk, and amber. You can definitely pick up on the coconut. I think that's what makes it so addictive. And even though it's a nice, creamy, sensual, amber fragrance, I think it works really nicely for summer as well. Just beautiful. A nice coconut, vanilla, sandalwood blend. That is the best way to describe it. And the coconut gives it a hint of sweetness. It's so nice. It's another one. It could give me a headache or I think it could be off-putting, but they just did such a beautiful job combining all of these notes. It's not too heavy. It's not too woody. It's just pleasant. And I can't get enough of it kind of soft and smooth. If you love coconut but you're looking for something that's more of a grown-up coconut fragrance, Santal Complet is beautiful because it's not like a candy-coated artificial coconut. It doesn't smell artificial at all. It actually smells very natural. I think of nature whenever I smell this and I think that speaks to the quality of the ingredients. Of course, it's fragrance de bois. I could picture being by the beach, in the mountains somewhere. Very versatile fragrance. Another fall favorite is Trey Cher from My Zinser. This fragrance smells like a warm hug. It just feels like wrapping yourself in cashmere. Rolling yourself in a blanket. So the definition of warm and cozy perfume. Keynotes include orange blossom, amber, jasmine, bourbon, vanilla, and Australian sandalwood. I spritzed this on earlier today, several hours ago though, so it's not competing with anything else. I love this perfume. It's a very soft, smooth amber. 
not too spicy, woody, not too deep. It's not too heavy. I really love ambery notes, but sometimes it can be too much and it gives me a headache after a few hours. I was so thankful that was not the case with Trey Share because it was love at first sniff. But even the first time I tried it, I knew I had to try it on my skin and wear it for a few days to make sure it would work with my chemistry. And I'm so lucky that it worked out because it instantly became one of my favorite fall perfumes. It really is a crime against humanity that this didn't make the list last year. I don't know how it got left off because this is not a new favorite. Most of these are new discoveries. This is an old favorite, Gentle Fluidity Gold from Maison Francis Kurgian, one of the most elegant, sophisticated vanilla fragrances in my collection. It has keynotes of juniper berry, nutmeg, coriander, musk, ambery woods, and vanilla. I personally can't pick up on the juniper berry. It's far more dominant in gentle fluidity silver, which smells like a gin and tonic. It has so much juniper berry. This is so different. They're kind of inverse triangles of the same notes. Kind of a cool inspiration. So he used the same notes in each fragrance, but in different quantities, so they smell completely different. And I remember when I was first discovering this fragrance, they pointed out that you could layer them and they would layer really beautifully. I'm just not a huge fan of the silver. I think the gold is perfection. Always reminds me of a bakery because it really is a sweet gourmand. It smells like baked goods. Elegant fragrances, but it's not wow it's not in your face i do think this draws a lot of compliments but it doesn't have that look at me smell me don't i smell so amazing vibe that baccarat rouge 540 has they're very different it's a different mood but i do think this is so sophisticated you could definitely wear this to a holiday party some sort of get together something black tie when you're really dressed up it transitions really well between casual to more fancy. All of these perfumes are standouts, but if I had to choose the standout among the standouts, it would be Luby Rouge from Christian Louboutin. This fragrance is just so interesting and unique, and the notes aren't really out of this world. You'll find them in a lot of fragrances, but this smells like unlike anything else. Very difficult to describe. I think they captured a Parisian cabaret so perfectly. I know that was the inspiration behind the fragrance. And I really do picture myself sitting in a dark smoky room with drinks on the table, dressed up, smoky eye, red lips. When I spray the perfume, it immediately sets the scene and it is so much fun to wear. This is a very sexy, seductive, flirty fragrance. This is your girl's night out, night out on the town, night out dancing, going down to South Beach, party perfume. Keynotes include cardamom, iris, and vanilla. I also pick up a lot of tobacco and leather. <sighs> so spicy, and it's so much fun to wear. Very different on the blotter than it is the skin. I think you have to try it on the skin. Now every time I walk into a Louboutin boutique, all I smell is Louby Rouge. I think they're probably scenting the boutiques with this fragrance. So nice. This is hands down my favorite fragrance of the entire line. There are probably two other fragrances that I really like. Not enough to purchase, at least not yet. I know they recently launched some new perfumes as well, but I think those are meant to be a bit more masculine. This is just by far the standout for me. And this is such a cool perfume. I think it's very trendy, chic, very modern. I could see somebody who's very stylish wearing this perfume. This would be their signature scent. Last but certainly not least, I am going with Spiritus Double Vanille from Guerlain. This is such a special fragrance and similar to Dama Bianca, I had read so much about it before I ever even tried it because so many people recommended this to me and it had disappeared. They redid this line and they recently brought it back, but you couldn't find this anywhere. Now it is available. Unfortunately, they elevated the price point, but I do really like these bottles and it's customizable. So you can customize the lid, the ribbon, the label, and then I did have my name engraved on the back. It says Erin Nicole, so it's a special bottle of perfume. But the fragrance itself, 
it deserves all of the hype. It is such a decadent vanilla fragrance. Really incredible. And as many vanilla fragrances as there are on the market, you would think it would be dupable or there would be something else similar. There really isn't. It's a standout. I received a sample of Rose Cherie in my order. That smells incredible as well. And now I am so tempted. I'm just so curious. I wish there was a way to smell all of the samples. I didn't end up picking up the advent calendar, but I need to visit a counter or find a way to order samples of these perfumes. So there are a few others that have caught my eye. It's delicious. This is a very warm, deep, moody vanilla. And it smells so special. I really feel like you have to be dressed up and going somewhere glamorous to wear this fragrance. I have not worn this nearly enough, so I'm hoping that I can take advantage and wear this a lot in the next few weeks. I think it'll be really nice for holiday parties, getting dressed up, visiting with friends, family. And that completes my list, so now let's turn to our very first giveaway. One lucky winner is going to win everything that you see on your screen. It will all be listed down below in the description box. All you have to do to enter is make sure you are subscribed with your notifications on. Follow me on Instagram at TV. Like and comment on this video. Include your Instagram handle because that's how I will contact the winner. The giveaway will remain open for one week and then the winner will be selected randomly the following day. All of these giveaways will be open internationally, so good luck to everybody who enters and that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I want to hear from you guys. I know it's difficult, but if you feel like you're up for the challenge, let me know what your 10 perfumes for life would be down in the comment section. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.